warm and heartfelt welcome to everyone. This meeting is being recorded. Second session of faculty development program. So before we begin, I would like to dedicate this session to an unsung yet inspirational lady of India, that is Anandibai Gopal Rao Joshi. So Anandibai Gopal Rao Joshi, originally named as Yamuna Joshi, was born on 31st March 1865 and raised in a Marathi Brahmin family of Bombay, British India. She was the first woman from India to study and graduate with a two-year degree in Western medicine in the United States of America. And thus, she was the first Indian female doctor of Western medicine. She got married at the age of nine to Gopal Rao Joshi, and at the age of 14, she gave birth to a boy who lived only for 10 days due to lack of medical care. So this proved to be a turning point in Anandi's life and inspired her to become a doctor. Her husband, Gopal Rao, encouraged her to study medicine and create her own identity in the world. Later, she applied to the Women's Medical College of Pennsylvania for pursuing higher education in medicine. She began her medical training at the age of 19 and obtained her degree in Western medicine in the year 1886. The topic of her thesis was obstetrics among the Aryan Hindus. The thesis utilized references from both Ayurvedic texts and American medical textbooks. Anandibai died of tuberculosis early the next year on 26 February 1887 before turning 22 years in Pune, India. Despite practicing medicine for only two to three months, she rose to fame for her sheer determination and hard work to become the first Indian female to study Western medicine and becoming an inspiration to all others who came after her. So now uh, we'd like to begin our today's second session of two weeks faculty development program on research methodology and applied econometrics for social sciences organized by Department of Business Administration, Assam University in collaboration with Vidyasagar University. So in this session, we are privileged and fortunate enough to have honorable and distinguished associate professor Abhijit Devnath sir with us. So uh, Abhijit Devnath sir uh, serves as an associate professor in the economics department of Assam University, Silchar. He is a gold medalist in both graduation and post-graduation studies. He cleared junior research fellowship in the year 2005. He has 17 years of working experience. His main areas of interest and teaching are international economics and mathematics for economics. His areas of research are health economics, international trade, and public economics. He is the author of more than dozens of publications. He loves and enjoys teaching. So with this, I would like to turn over the session to you, sir. Thank you. Abhijit, sir, please. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Department of uh, Business Administration, Assam University, Vidyasagar University, for arranging this uh, beautiful workshop and inviting me to share some of my thoughts. Uh, <clears throat> the topic which has uh, uh, been given to me is uh, time series analysis. An introduction. I mean, I shall cover the uh, introductory issues or part of time series analysis. <clears throat> I hope uh, I just uh, collected information from Dr. Maiti that uh, the participants belong to different disciplines. Uh, some of them are uh, from economics, many of them are from commerce and some other branches of social sciences. So in this uh, presentation, I would rather uh, concentrate more on uh, non-economics participants. I mean, <clears throat> the 
issues or topic that I will raise will be very basic of time series analysis. Uh, these are very basic, but then very, very practical from research point of view. Can you see my screen? Anyone please respond if you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, as I told you, I will talk on uh, time series analysis from basic uh, point of view and and before i begin the serious issues of time series analysis we first have to know what is time series analysis in statistics uh, if you look at data you will find there are broadly three types of data in statistics in economics in i mean in, in commerce we have uh, three types of data. One is called cross-section data, then we have time series data, and then we have panel data. Now in cross-section data, what we find, we find that data belongs to different units of cross-section, but at a particular point of time. Say for example, uh, state domestic product of India in 2021. So what we are looking at, we are looking at the state domestic product, that is SDP of different states of India in 2021 only, okay? So what we are looking at here, we are looking at the value of a particular variable in this SDP, at a particular point of time, that is 2021, across different space, different states. It can be states, it can be districts, it can be villages, okay? It doesn't matter. The important thing here to note is that in cross-section data, we look at values of a variable or a group of variables across space, at a particular point of time. Also, for example, human development index value across different nations of the world in 2021. This is also an example of cross-section data. But in time series data, what we find, we find value of a particular variable across different points of time, or different use of time. It can be weekly, it can be monthly, it can be daily data, it can be yearly data. Now, so for example, a Nifty spot price, which is around 1800 today. So if you look at Nifty's 50 spot price from January 2022 to today, that means each, each and every day we have a uh, spot price for, for Nifty 50. Then this is an example of time series data. Similarly, you can have gross domestic product data, GDP data of India or any other nations over a period of time. Say, for example, from uh, 1970 to 2000. So for each year you have data, 1970, you have one GDP, 1971, you have another GDP data. So this is an example of time series data. So these are the examples that we have in economics. I, I believe that in political science or other branch of social science also, uh, you come across time series data. In, in political science, I can give an example. Uh, say for example, the the margin of uh, winning party in Lok Sabha from 1960 in India. So, so you have different 
Lukshova from 19 uh, results from 1960. So you can see the margin of winning parties uh, vote collection or seat collection, say for example, across different time points. So this becomes a time series data. However, in time series data, it is not necessary that the variable will be only one. It is not necessary that you have to be uh, collecting data or you have to be uh, you know, arranging data for GDP only. You can have simultaneously data for GDP, consumption expenditure, investment expenditure, uh, tax revenue collection. Okay? So multiple variables may be possible. So one or more variables. Data for one or more variables may be collected for many observations at different time periods. Another important feature of time series data is that time series data is generally regularly spaced. That means the interval between data points are uniform. So in annual data, for example, the gap will be one year. In monthly data, the gap will be one month. In weekly data, the gap will be seven days. If you have a data series of GDP for few uh, observation, then monthly for few observation, and then weekly for few observation, then this series cannot be termed as time series data, pure time series data. Because in time series data, the gap between the time points should be uniform. And needless to say that uh, time series analysis can either be univariate or multivariate. Univariate time series analysis means that you have only one variable. One variable. So if you want to analyze the behavior of one variable over a period of time, then it is called univariate time series analysis. Say for example, how I mean, Nifty index, how Nifty index reacts to its past value. How Nifty index reacts to the value that it assumed in the last day or the day before the last day. So if you have only one variable and if you want to see how current value of the variable, that means how today's Nifty 50 reacts to last day's Nifty 50, then it becomes a univariate analysis. If you want to see how consumption expenditure of India in 2021 reacted by the consumption expenditure of India in 2020, 2019, 2018, then it becomes a univariate analysis. Theoretically very common, but practically we hardly use univariate analysis. On the other hand, in multivariate uh, time series analysis, we have a group of variables reacting together to explain something. Say, for example, determinant of consumption expenditure. Now you know that consumption expenditure in any country will be affected by a number of variables. One important variable is income. Another important variable may be inflation rate. Then you have uh, 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 what do you call uh, uh, preference for uh, a particular goods season. So there are multiple uh, factors that can affect your uh, consumption variable. So when you analyze uh, uh, time series analysis with a group of variables, that means you have one dependent variable and lot many independent variables. Okay, those who do those who do not uh, know dependent variable and independent variable, I would like to say that. Independent variable are the variable that explains your dependent variable. Say, say for example, in the dynamics of consumption and income. Okay, how income affects your consumption? So income becomes your 
independent variable or explanatory variable and consumption is your dependent variable. How campaign, how political campaign affects political result, for example, you want to see in your research, you want to see how political campaign affects political uh, results. Okay, how uh, uh, then, then this political expenditure and political campaign can be your explanatory or independent variable. And the results can be your dependent variable, like that. Now the next question that arises is that should we go for time series analysis or cross-section analysis? Okay. Which one is better or which one is good? Actually that depends. There is nothing called better or bad or superior or inferior, inferior in, in taking a particular uh, type of data. If your research is such that it demands analysis of different variables on a particular point of time, okay, then you actually require cross-section study. On the other hand, if you wish to analyze the behavior of certain variable over a period of time, then you actually need a time series design. Or time series of proof. If you want to see, for example, how the expenditure on minority in different states of India influence health status of the different states. Okay, you need a cross section study. So, what do you want to see? I want to see how the expenditure on minority schemes affects health status of different states in India. Okay, in 2021, for example, you need a cross section study. Or if, if you are interested to see how uh, the level of education influence domestic violence in India, you, you literally need a cross-section study. You don't need a time series study for that. But if you want to see how foreign direct investment, how the inflow of foreign direct investment affects India's growth, then you need a time series analysis. Because you see, you will not get multiple observation of foreign direct investment or India's growth for a particular point of time. So in this kind of situation, you require observation over a period of time. It can be, I mean, monthly inflow of FDI and monthly economic growth. It can be yearly inflow of uh, FDI and yearly economic growth. So you need a time series analysis. In first case, where you wanted to see how uh, level of education influence domestic violence, you don't actually require a time series analysis to do that because you have data for different individuals across India on these two variables, that is domestic violence and level of education. You go to NFHS 5, National and Family Health Survey, for each household, you will get this data. For each of the household, you will get this data, level of education and domestic violence, Ex whether a particular household uh, uh, woman has woman in a particular household has experienced domestic violence or not? What is the level of education of husband and wife? So you get this data for each and every household. I mean, sample each and every household from the sample, 
across India in a particular point of time. If it is NFHS 5, then it will cover the area from uh, 19, uh, 2018 to 21, I guess. But then someone might say that what if I consider uh, three or more than one NFHS data? I have NFHS data five, I have NFHS data four, three, two, one. Can I not uh, take data from all these NFHS data series? Yes, you can take. You can take this to strengthen your analysis, to strengthen your result, or make your analysis more scientific. Okay. Then you'll call this panel data analysis. I'm not going there. But what I'm trying to say, you can still do this. I mean, even if you have data for a particular uh, survey, that is an FHS 5, you can capture your or you can address your objective that is how uh, that is whether uh, level of education influence domestic violence or not now the next question that arises why do we actually require time series models what is the problem with uh, the classical regression models? Here I would like to tell those who are not from economics or commerce, those who have not studied econometrics, I would like to tell you that in economics, we have a very beautiful sub, uh, uh, subject paper or area, which is called econometrics. In a very simple language, I will tell you that this econometrics is, is that branch of economics which actually helps in predicting behavior, which actually helps in predicting behavior. Excuse me. Sorry for the <coughs> interruption. Uh, what I was trying to say is that in econometrics, uh, what we basically do, we estimate uh, uh, regression models, which helps us in number of ways. Uh, I'm, I'm telling this for non-economic students, mind you. Say for example, uh, you want to say, you, you want to know what uh, value of GDP in 2025, okay? Today we are having, today we are having 22, and you want to predict what was the value of GDP, India's GDP in 2025, okay? If you want to do it scientifically, we have a tool in economic tricks that will help you to predict that value, okay? As it is prediction, it will not be 100% accurate, but it will be the best uh, thing or the best uh, possible uh, way through which we can predict India's GDP in 2025. Okay, so if you give us, if you give us data for at least 20 observation, 20 years GDP data, then we can, using econometrics, we can predict the value of GDP in 2025. Similarly, if you want to uh, empirically know that what are the factors that influence child malnutrition in India, okay, child malnutrition. So you, you, you know theoretically that there are many variables that influence child malnutrition. 
say, for example, maternal level of education, then level of income, uh, place of residence, race, religion. So theoretically, you have 100 uh, variables or factors that influence uh, child uh, uh, malnutrition. Okay. Now, what are the factors that actually influence child mal malnutrition in India? If you want to know this, then again, you can use econometric. That will tell you in the best possible manner what are the actual factors that influence and what are the factors that are not. In this uh, case, I have that whenever you identify variables that influence certain other variables, in this example, we had child malnutrition and several other independent variables or explanatory variables. Now the variables that affect child malnutrition that can be classified into two parts. One is called theoretical variable or the variable that you identified from review of literature or meta-analysis. And the other, the other variable which you have identified from the data that you have collected from the film, okay? Say for example, uh, maternal education. Maternal education might have affected, you know, child malnutrition in Pakistan, in England, in US, but it is not necessary that maternal education will also affect child malnutrition in India. Okay, now your, what is the, or what are the variables that are affecting your child malnutrition in India from the data that you have? If you are interested to know this, then your review of literature will not help. Then your meta analysis will not help. Okay, but econometric tool will help. A political party, for example, a political party spends on different areas during their election campaign. They spend on advertisement, they spend on, say, for example, bannering. They spend on hiring uh, reputed personalities to uh, campaign for them. So there are multiple channels through where they are uh, channelizing their money for better result. Now, what are the actual factors that influence their uh, vote collection or winning seat? If you are interested to know this, then again, in econometrics, we have tools that will scientifically tell you, or that will practically tell you, or that will empirically tell you. There are a lot many tools in econometrics that helps this, but the most common and simple tool is called classical regression model. Okay, as I told you, there are a lot many things, lot many tools, the, but the most commonly used tool is called classical regression model. Okay. So I hope I could uh, tell you uh, briefly the econometrics and the classical regression model, what they actually uh, do. Now, having said this, this classical regression model, which helps in prediction, which helps in identifying variables from practical point of view, not theoretical point of view, okay, but this classical regression model has some limitation. And the limitation is the classical regression model is based on the assumption that causation is instantaneous. That means if I spend, uh, if, if the dependent independent variable moves today, then that will influence your dependent variable today itself. Okay, let me give an example. Suppose we are interested to see how uh, spending on education, how spending on health, how spending on sports affects GDP. Okay, so classical regression model assumes that if you spend on health, education, or sports today, then this will affect GDP either positive way or negative way today only. Okay, that means instantaneous. But if you use your senses, 
then you will find that this there are some situations where this position need not be instantaneous. That means if we spend, if government of India spend more money on education, health and sports, then the effect of this expenditure may not be realized this year only. It may be realized after two, three, four, five years. Okay, so what I'm trying to say that there is always a lagged effect in some uh, particular situations. <clears throat> if we if we spend money on health, it will affect GDP. If we spend money on education, that will affect GDP. But the effect on that GDP may not be today itself. It may be after two three years. Or sometimes what happens if you spend today on health, education, and sports, its effect on GDP will not be limited to tomorrow's GDP only. It can also affect GDP after, I mean, tomorrow's GDP will be affected. It will also affect GDP in the next year. It will also affect GDP in the third year. So that means there may be some non-instantaneous effect of independent variable on dependent variable. If a particular political party spent money in campaign or in advertisement, it is not necessary that the impact of that spending will be realized on that day only. It may be realized after two, three days, after two, three months, after two, three years. Okay. So what I'm trying to say that in the real world, the position is not always instantaneous. It is not like a paracetamol pill that you are suffering from fever and you take paracetamol, immediately you get relieved. Okay? The real world is much more complex than paracetamol and fever dynamics. Okay? And unfortunately, for this kind of situation, this classical regression model is useless because the whole idea of classical regression model is based on the assumption that the causation is instantaneous. Okay, so if you believe that the causation may not be instantaneous, and if you use classical regression model, then you are actually going in the wrong direction. I'm saying this to all who are even uh, belong to economics and have studied econometrics, or you are, or you, you are, if you are using econometrics in your research or research paper. If you, if you are believe that the, the relationship between my variables may not be static, it, it can be dynamic, okay? There is a need to think whether you should use the traditional regression model or not. Another problem uh, of classical regression model is that we cannot use this model to understand the behavior of variable that evolve over time. Okay. How the dynamic behavior among variables okay, evolve over time. This kind of situation we cannot also do using traditional regression model or classical regression model. <clears throat> uh, Sometimes back, I was interested to see, uh, you know, uh, how uh, this uh, agriculture sector, industrial sector, and service sector, okay, interact among themselves, and which uh, are, which is the most important sector for uh, economic growth. I was interested in my uh, PhD work to see this that uh, many people say that service sector is important. There are a few others who says that industrial sector is important. Then there are some uh, economists who believe that agricultural sector is important, more in, most important. So I had this curious uh, curiosity to see which is the sector which actually uh, important from practical point of view. And I, I, I took, uh, the case of uh, Northeast India for that. And I found that it is 
the agricultural sector. And for that, I could not use this classical regression model. Why not? Because I was interested to see a sort of dynamic behavior and, and that too, how this behavior interact among themselves over a period of time. Okay. So that's why I could not use the classical regression model, which is also called ordinary least square model. So these are the two uh, uh, practical uh, ground which you can put uh, in defense of time series model as opposed to your ordinary least square model. In, in time series analysis, there are some uh, words or terms, terminology that we have to understand very clearly. And there are many, I have just picked four randomly. The first term that we have to understand is about period, okay? Now, by this period, we basically mean the uh, the nature of time point or the unit of time point, rather I should say, whether it is daily data, weekly data, monthly data, quarterly data, or annual data, or decadal data. So in any time series analysis, whenever you come across this terminology called period, so you have to immediately realize that it is talking about the nature of the unit of analysis. That is whether it is daily or weekly or monthly or quarterly or annually. Okay. So period can be uh, daily, it can be weekly, like that. The second important term that we have to understand here is called cycle. Now, this cycle means any periodic variation uh, <clears throat> that we have in time series data. Okay like you have recession, then recovery, then you have uh, uh, peak, then you have bottom. These are called cycle. Those who are from commerce uh, uh, area, I mean, people from commerce would easily relate it to stock market. That in stock market, if you see the stock price of uh, any, uh, company or any index, so to say, you will find that sometimes it is moving up, then sometimes moving down, then stagnant, then again repeat in, 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 in their terminology, in commerce terminology, they call it uh, bearish move, then a bullish move, then you have a subsistence level, then you have resistance level. So th those who even uh, um, are interested in stock market trading, they, will, they can easily relate it. This cycle means how the variable is trending in a particular period, whether it is trending upward, downward, or it remains stagnant at the bottom or up. Okay? This is all what we mean by cycle in time series analysis, which is very, very important. Then you have season. Season, as you can understand, is, is, is uh, um, season basically referred to a period of time, okay, uh, or <clears throat> a period of time when some uh, special things happen. Special things need not always be uh, uh, peace giving, it can, it can at times be peace heartening also. Like Christmas can be a season, okay. Then Durga Puja can yet be another season. Uh, then you have drought can be a bad season. Then flood or rainy rainfall, uh, rainy days can be another season. So by season we mean a period of time where some special things happens, which are either welcomed or not so welcomed. Then we have friend. Uh, I mean, the most common term that we have in time series analysis. And I, I hope you have understood 
the meaning of trend. By trend, we mean how the uh, variable is uh, behaving, whether it is increasing, decreasing, or or not increasing, not decreasing. That is not changing. Okay, if it is increasing, then we say upward trend. If it is decreasing, then we say downward trend. If it is not changing, then we say it's stagnant. So these are the four commonest uh, term that we have in time series. Moving on, uh, now I would like to talk about the, the very basic model that in if someone can respond. Can you help me? Yes, sir. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Your voice is breaking. Right now, it is okay, sir. Your voice. Okay, you please tell. It's again breaking, sir. Uh, the first model that we have in uh, sorry. time series analysis is called distributed lag model. distributed lag model. Now this, uh, <clears throat> this model actually explains the current value of a variable as a function of current and past value of another variable. Say for example, uh, we have uh, data for consumption expenditure in year T and the independent variables are like this, beta naught, then yt plus beta one, yt minus one plus beta two, yt minus two plus beta p, yt minus p, plus error term. So here CT means, say for example, consumption expenditure and uh, YT means consumption, CT means consumption expenditure in the current year and YT means income in the current year. And this YT minus one means income the last year. And YT minus two means income before two years back. So in this, case, what we are looking at, we are looking at how income at different point of time influence consumption expenditure of today. That means how our consumption expenditure of today is affected by our income of today and income of last periods. That is consumption expenditure of 2022, how this is influenced by cons income of 2022, 21, 20, uh, 20, 19, and so on. Okay, so this is a pure case of distributed lag model. Now, if you use logic, you would find that effect of income on consumption will be more stronger in the current period. That means this year's income will affect this year consumption in more 
strongest possible manner. Income of last year may affect in consumption of today. That means how I will consume in the month of September will be of course influenced by how or what was my salary in the month of June. But then this month's income will probably be more dominant in affecting my consumption expenditure than the income that I earned in the month of June. In the month of March, in fact, the influence of income on consumption will be even much lower. So what I'm trying to say that this parameter, which in econometrics we tell marginal effect of income will be gradually decreasing in size. That means if beta naught is say for example, seven five, then beta one has to be less than seven five. Beta three has to be less than 70. Okay, so when you say that beta naught is greater than beta one is greater than beta two dot 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 greater than beta p. So you literally mean that as I go far away, then my income affects my consumption today in a less significant manner. Okay, so, so when you remember this thing, then you find that in this kind of modeling, our OLS, that is classical regression model, causes two serious problems. <clears throat> Please note, uh, in, in this up to now, what I'm trying to tell you, I am trying to tell you what is the problem of classical regression model in time series data, because I'm trying to justify time series modeling. So in, in order to justify time series techniques, I have to criticize the existing technique that we already have. If we, if we can still use the existing technique or models for time series data, then there is no point of learning time series model in a different manner, okay? So I'm trying to tell you what are the problems of traditional regression model or classical regression model or ordinary least square technique in case of time series data analysis. So <clears throat> the first problem in, in using OLS in this case is that if you can see that YT and YT minus one and YT minus two, these are actually different values of the same variable with some lag. These are, these are basically your income, but of different periods. So obviously income of today will be related to income of yesterday. That means what I am earning in the month of September obviously depends on what I am earning in the month of August. There are high correlation. So when you have high correlation among themselves, then you face a problem called multi collinearity. Multi collinearity. So this is one problem that you can see while you have a distributed lag model. And in the presence of multi collinearity, you cannot use OLS because the assumption, one of the important assumptions of OLS is that there should not be strong multi collinearity but there is a possibility of having strong multi in this case. So this is one problem. The second problem told you that theoretically you expect, theoretically you expect that uh, the value of beta naught will be greater than beta one, will be greater than beta two, will be greater than beta rho. That means theoretically we are expecting this. But if you use OLS to any data set, with this kind of modeling, there is no guarantee that this expectation will be met. That means it is not sure that beta naught will be expected, beta naught will be greater than beta one, greater than beta two. It is possible that your beta one will be 0 0.70 and beta two will be 0.83. It is possible if you use one. So that is the second problem of using OLS in this kind of situation is that we have to 
चैलेंज ट So actually, in this, in this uh, uh, slide, I am trying to tell you the problem of using classical regression model in time series data. There are two problems. One problem is about multicolority. Those who have studied econometrics, they know what is multicolority. Those who have not studied multicolorities, I would like to tell you that multicolority is a disease of. Uh, data series which if present you cannot use oils that means the traditional model of regression because traditional model of regression is based on the assumption of not having this disease but in this case whenever you have a time series data there is a possibility of having this disease called multicolority okay and second thing is that use of oils in this distributed lag model using oils will cause this insecurity that you will get the estimated value of parameter which is not defended by your theory which is not expected by your logic okay so these are the two problems of using oils in case of distributed lag model another problem that you have of using oils in this case you see how many parameter you are having here 1 1 2 3 4 7 for example 5 only 5 you want to see the impact of uh, income on consumption for up to 5 lakh so you see what is the problem in order to estimate this problem you have to miss lot many observation of y let me show you what is this Let me show you why this is so. So, for example, I have consumption, then I have income. Income of today, that is, say, for example, two thousand twenty-two. Today means this year. I am representing income by Y and consumption by C only. Then this is my two column. Then I have Y of two thousand. Uh, 21 21 let me first put the consumption data in the data so consumption is like this 10 20 30 40 50 60 and in some data are say for example uh 40 60 then 80 hundred hundred and twenty hundred forty hundred and sixty and in your model you had five lakh that means in this model ct alpha not beta one uh yt plus dot 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 up to say for example beta 5 y5 so what the combination of data you require you require this this and then five more lag so that means your first uh first column in the data set first set of column will be this 10 is your c then y of t that it will be your 40 then y t minus 1 it will be in count the last year that is 60 then y t minus 2 it will be 80 then y t minus 
60, it will be 100. So what I'm trying to tell you here, that in order to get one row, one row, you have to consume up to five level of it. One, two, three, four, five, because we have five left. So, so what is the problem here? The problem here is that if you have, say, for example, 10 observations, sorry, 20 years data, and you want to estimate this model, you will literally having 15 observations. If you have 15 years data, you will literally have 10 observations. If you have 10 years data, you will literally have five observations, like that. So because of this problem, your degrees of freedom will be seriously affected. And this is the third problem of using OLS in this uh, situation. When you have this kind of modeling, your degrees of freedom will be very less. And that will make your hypothesis stating very difficult. Okay, I can understand that those who have not studied econometrics or statistics will find them very difficult. Uh, they cannot relate it, but then I cannot help it. I have to tell this. Okay. So, uh, I mean, you can simply remember these three points, three important points, uh, not using, you know, uh, OLS in case of distributed learning. Now, what is the solution then? The solution of this kind of situation is to estimate a dynamic model, okay? What is the dynamic model of the model that we just had? The dynamic uh, uh, illustration of the model is this. CT, that is consumption in current year, is a function of income of current year plus some parameter of consumption of last year, only one year, plus error term. This is called dynamic model or quack distributed lab model. This is called dynamic model or quack distributed lab model. Estimating this model is same as estimating this model. Estimating this model is same as estimating this model. That means if you estimate this model, if you have the estimate parameter, these, these, and these, you can estimate all these parameters, the alpha naught, beta naught, beta one, beta p, all these parameters you can derive from this. I'm not going in detail how that can be derived. Uh, if you look at any basic econometrics book, you'll find the logic, okay? But what I'm trying to say that instead of estimating this model, you better estimate this model, by distributed lag model. This model. That is very important. Now let me show you some practical how to show this model. I hope uh, too much one way lecture is boring at times. I cannot see your face, how you are reacting, I don't know. So let me show you uh, how you can estimate this model practical point of view. How practical you can do one of my favorites of For this, I have in some data. These are the data. This data have your consumption, then you have you have income. Not many variables, other variables are also here. So I'm not uh, telling you what are the other variables. So first, the variables are this. This is your consumption variable. And this is your disposable income value. Okay. These are the two variables.
Now, first of all, we have to read this data in views. Now, how to do this? Uh, you see, our data, our data starts from 1975 and ends in 2003. These are very hypothetical data, so don't take them very seriously. Okay. So uh, you remember that we have uh, data from 1975 and it ends in 2003. Okay. 1975, 1975, and 2003. And how many variables we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine variables. Nine variables. Okay. Those who have not uh, experienced EVUs or want to see how EVUs works, you may note down if you're interested. Okay. This is EVU scan. Now, how to read this data in EVU scan? If you need time in between, you please interact. I'll stop and I'll give you time. Now, the first step is create new EVU's work file. This is the first step that you have to do. You have to click on this create a new EVU's work file. So I'm, I'm doing that. The moment you do this, you will get a window like this uh, where you have what file structure type, then you have frequency, start time, end time. Okay, these are the three things that you have to remember. Now, in what file structure type, there are three types of structure. One is called ARM structure, it is reserved for cross section data. Then we have dated regular frequency, this is for time series data. And then you have panel data. So, since the data is time series in our case, we will select dated dated regular frequency. Then in frequency, we have a lot many periods, multi-year, annual, semi-annual, quarterly, monthly, as I told you, weekly, daily. So in our case, our data is annual, so I select annual. Then we have to put the start date. The start date, uh, 1975, and the end date is 2003. 2003. Then you press OK. The moment you press OK, they will show you the range which starts from 75 to 2003 and we have 29 observations. If you count, you will find that there are 29 observations. Okay. So once we have this window, the next step is to click on PROC, P-R-O-C. Then you go to import and load import from file, okay? I repeat, proc, then import, then import from file. Then you select your folder. My folder is time series analysis. So I'm selecting it. Then you select your data. Here it is, data. Then you click on open. The moment you click on open, a new window will come, which will show you uh, the name of different variables, that is column heading with different data. Then you click next, 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 finish. No. So in this way, you import data in eViews. While you import data in eViews, you can do a lot many experiments. So here, we will estimate that quack distributed lag model or the dynamic model. So how to do it? You select object. So object, new object, equation, I repeat, you have to click on object, then new object, then equation. It will be loaded at first. Equation will be already selected. You have to just click on OK. A window will come, which will give some space to write your equation. Now, how to write your equation in English? It is very easy. First, you write your dependent variable. In this case, it is CO. Then you write your constant. It is C or the intercept. You write your dependent variable, ID, this income, 
can you write your second independent variable this consumption of last year so co minus one click ok so this is your model this is your model I'm not sure whether i can type it here or not now how to write this model is basically uh, so i can write it like this consumption in expenditure in period t equals to intercept is minus 279 and 21 plus coefficient of yd that is 0 0.48 yd plus 0 0.54 consumption of last year so this is the estimated dynamic model now from this model from this model you can estimate your original model that is distributed lag model using this coefficient level i am not going to show it here Now, once we have estimated a, the basic model of time series that is spread distributed lag model, the second thing that you have to check whether it has any uh, problem of serial correlation or not. That can also be done using reviews very easily. Okay. And the steps are very easy. You go to uh, view. Then residual tests, here you will get serial correlation LM test. How many legs you want to take? I'm taking two legs. So you take OK. Now you can see your results of serial correlation. I'm not going to interpret this result. I'm just showing you how to do it in a views. OK. So I think I have uh, tried to tell you the problem of using OLS in uh, distributed lag model and what is its alternative in time series modeling. Okay, instead of estimating distributed lag model, you can rather estimate a quite distributed lag model. I told you the logic why it is so, and I also shown how you can do it in if you use in only five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Let me now move on uh, to next important issue, which is part of the most important issue. Yes, that is the problem of station. Stationary series. Before I tell you what is a stationary time series, let me again tell you that the problem of OLS are not only limited to the fact that OLS, that is ordinary least squared technique or classical regression model, is uh, having the problem of instantaneous relationship, that is, or multicolonarity. Okay. Another problem of OLS is that ordinary least squared technique assumes that data are stationary in nature. I told you that in econometrics, the basic tool that we have is called ordinary least square technique. 
which in short we say ons which is very frequently used tool to prediction or to identify factors determining factors okay there are several assumption of ons one important assumption of ons is that it assumes that data are stationary in nature stationary in nature so that means if data are not stationary in nature we cannot use this beautiful tool ons so we have to first understand what is stationary data okay there are three characteristics three important characteristics of a stationary series okay characteristics of stationary series number 1 the mean of the variable for example variable is x is constant over time i am trying to tell you the meaning of stationary in the most simple possible manner for non economics uh, people who have not studied econometrics i am not using any econometric i mean uh, equation alpha beta gamma and using only simple language okay so the first important characteristic is that the mean of the variable should remain constant over time that means if we have a data which starts from 1973 to 2003 okay now the mean should not change say for example uh, from 1973 to 1981 the mean value of the variable means means average average value is say for example 20 200 then from 1981 to 1992 it should be around 200 only or slightly different from 200 it cannot be 800 or 2000 similarly from 1992 if we again calculate the average value of the variable in the last case we had consumption expenditure it should be around 200 only okay that means the average value of the variable is independent of the time period whether we consider the entire time period or a segment of the entire time period the mean should remain around 200 that is the meaning of that the mean of the variable is constant over time which is hardly possible in real world by the way second characteristic of stationary data is that the variance the variance of the variable so for example x2 is also constant over time it also has to be constant like mean is average and variance is an indicator of dispersion that means how far the value of the variable is moving away from mean value on year to year basis okay suppose this is your time and this is the variable and say for example this is your data points okay and this is your say for example mean with a, with a trend of course then this dispersion that is the distance from this value to mean the distance from this value to mean and the distance from this value to mean on average they should be same okay on average they should be same so if you have a data like this data points
and you have a mean line with a trend like this, that means your dispersion, that is the variance of the variable is not constant over time. Okay. And a third point is this, is that the simple, the simple correlation, the simple correlation coefficient, correlation coefficient between the variable in the current period and that in the last period, say for example, xt minus k and xt depends on the length of the length, but not on other variables. Okay, so the simple correlation coefficient between two values of the same variable, one is current period and the other is last, I mean, lag values of the variable. It can be one year lag, it can be two year lag, that is a different thing. It should be dependent on the length of the lag, not on other variables, okay? So these are the three important characteristics of stationary series or stationary variable. If any of this characteristic is not met, then we will say that the series is non-stationary. The series is non-stationary. And a non-stationary series cannot be used for estimation by ordinary least square technique. I repeat, the most commonly used technique, as I'm repeatedly telling you, is ordinary least square technique or classical regression model cannot be used for a group of data which are not stationary in nature. Okay. We can use them under some condition. I'll tell you later. Now, how to check this? stationarity, whether the data is stationary or not, how to check. Okay. Now, in order to do that, I am not going to tell you how theoretically you can do it. Let me show you how practically you can do it in using any software in a very simple possible manner. You need not know uh, theories of you know, uh, identifying stationary series and non-stationary series. Even if you know how basic of views or stata, you can check that in a minutes of time. It's very easy. There are basically two techniques, rather I should say, two ways, broadly two ways. One is called graphical technique, where we uh, use ACF, uh, to find whether there is any uh, stationarity or not. But these graphical techniques are not very popular in empirical research. These are, uh, these are something which we use in the classroom. But in research, what have to do? We have to, we have to uh, take help of non-graphical technique of uh, checking uh, stationarity, okay? In this uh, issue of stationarity, uh, there is a term which is very common and popular for uh, econometricians or the students of econometrics is called unit root. Okay. I told you that if this, if this, if any of these conditions are not met, we will say that the series is not stationary in nature. Okay. Alternatively, one can say that if any of these uh, characteristics are not met, then the series will have a unit root. So having a unit root means that the data is not stationary. So there, 
uh, interchangeably use. Not non-stationary data means data with unit root. Okay, so checking unit root for a data series is also same as checking unit root or testing unit root. Okay, these are the terms which we use in econometrics for some very valid reason, but unfortunately, I will not be able to explain that uh, here in this uh, discussion. So let me now tell you how to do this in uh, eViews. Again, I'm going to eViews to read this data. My data points transform 1973, then ends with 2002. So I have data. Suppose I want to ch check whether consumption data is stationary or not. So this is the data. It starts from 1975 actually. So let me delete these observations. I will read from 1976 to 2003. 76 to 2003, sorry. And mistakenly read the data from 73. Actually, it begins from 76. So it will be 1976. Then 2002. 2002. So this is the consumption data. Okay. If you want to see its graph, how it is behaving whether it is increasing or decreasing over time. Yeah, there it is. You can see it is increasing over time very smoothly. Right from 1976, it is increasing with a little, uh, with a little uh, swing, down swing and up swing. It's, it's moving upward almost smoothly. Okay. Now, how to uh, do the unit to test? In order to do the unit to test, first of all, you have to identify the variables for which you want to do unit to test. That means stationarity test. Suppose I want to do it for consumption expenditure, that is CO. So what I'll do, I'll open this data set. As I can see, it's from 1976 up to 2003. Then I'll go to view. The moment I click on view, there are lot many options that I can select from. Okay. Here you can see unit root test. Okay, I repeat, unit root test means stationarity test. So you click here. Okay. Then again, there are a lot many types. I'm not going to tell you what type to be selected in what kind of situation, because that will take uh, six, seven days discussion for that. I'll just tell, I'll assume that you want to say, for example, do augmented Dickey Fuller test, which is very, very common. And, uh, very popular okay so type of test is augmented dicky fuller test then test for unit root in so there are three types of uh what i can say uh, three, three, three nature of the variable okay three nature of the variable uh, so you see this is Consumption expenditure of 76 and this is consumption expenditure of 77. 
if i take difference if i take difference say for example uh, data of consumption of 77 minus consumption of 76 so this is called difference in consumption of consumption from 1977 to 76 so this is called difference fast difference of consumption variable this is called fast difference okay similarly i can have difference between 78 and 77 this is also fast difference this is fast difference this is fast difference now if i again take difference of fast difference for example this minus this then it becomes second difference so you need to test can be done for this values these values or these values these values in the language of econometrics we call them level value this value we call them first difference and this value we call them second difference so level first difference and second difference so eus will ask you that you want to conduct you need to test for which type of variable it is level variable first difference or second difference in the present case i am interested in level variable so i hope you have understood the meaning of this level means the original variable first difference means the the series of the variable which we generate by taking first difference like that then you have the uh, test equation that there are three options that means whether you want to estimate the model with trend and intercept with intercept without trend or neither intercept nor trend how you want to estimate that you have to fix and then you have to select lag length there are a lot more techniques which you can select i will suggest you to go with aic akai key information criteria and for annual data you can give uh at best four maximum lag it will automatically select uh what is the lag it should be taken okay the thing that i am talking right now uh, might sound a bit odd for non-econometrics uh, people but they are with me i can't help it in time series analysis and that too within that short period of time you have to take this leverage sir excuse me how to yes. decide how many lags to be taken you need not you need, you see uh, theoretically speaking you select that many lag where your akit information is the minimum you theoretically if you estimating the model say for example manually then you estimate one model with one lag second model with two lag three, third model with three lag fourth model with four lag when you do it manually then you choose that model where aic is the minimum Okay. But interestingly, in EVUs, we need not do it. We can select automatic selection. Okay, there are two options. I can I, I hope you can see one is automatic selection and the other is user specified. User specified means you manually choose one, two, three, four, like that. But nowadays nobody does this. You better select automatic selection and you give maximum lag. Maximum lag you can give four, five, ten, twenty. But my suggestion will be for animal data, you give four. But giving four does not mean that the model will be estimated for four length. What EVUs will do, EVUs will uh, internally estimate four model with one leg, two leg, three leg, four leg. And the model that will have the minimum AIC will show you, will, will be displayed. I hope you get the answer. If it is daily data, how many legs to be taken, sir? For daily data, daily data, you take 30. One, three. Yes, three, zero, three, zero. Three, zero, okay, sir. For daily data, how many periods? Uh, one, zero, nine, zero observations, data points for three years. Three years, you can take up to 30. Okay, thank you. For weekly, you can consider uh, seven. Okay. okay. For monthly, uh, you can take two. Thank you, sir. Yeah. But I tell you that uh, you have to select, uh, even if you go with, uh, say, for example, 30 maximum lag in daily data, you, you please select automatic selection. When you select automatic selection, you do not run the risk 
of artificially selecting the maximum lag because you are telling reviews that you take the lag which is which gives you the minimum aic i am giving you option of 30 lakhs at best do not consider more than 30 so when you select 30 for daily data you are not telling that you take 30 lakh what you are telling the software you are telling that you maximum you take 30 not more than 30 okay. <coughs> sir yes. sir uh, uh, sir for a uh, large data is it uh, wise to take sic instead of aic uh, there is debate among the economists regarding this uh, selection aic and sic okay i have personally from my experience i have seen that uh, aic and sic both give similar result in 80 percent times okay in 80 percent times you will get the same kind of result but sometimes you will find that sic is giving you some lag and aic is give you some other lag. in yes, that yes. kind of yeah in that kind of situation my suggestion will be that you do one thing you keep one model in front of you with the best aic and the other model uh, with sic then you see the other uh, indicators uh, of selecting a model. For example, adjusted R square. Which model is giving you better adjusted R square, for example? Which model is giving you uh, more degrees of freedom, for example? Are you getting my point? The, the, model, sir, yes, sir. the, the model which is chosen by most of the other indicator, you should go with that. You can also use your theory. For example, let me give an example, very beautiful example. You are running a model with, say for example, long time series data, and you have gone with SIC. And that SIC has given you, say for example, eight lakh. Are you getting my point? Eight lakh. Uh, and, yes, sir. And AIC gives you only three lakh. Now you use your common sense. You use your uh, logic. You use your uh, previous literature of review and use your other parameters like F statistics, T statistics, then uh, the specification of the model. If you find that from theoretical point of view, uh, three leg is best, I mean, eight legs will be difficult to explain. Okay, and uh, this F statistics is far better with three legs and uh, the adjusted R square is uh, going well with three legs, then why you are going with eight legs? Remember, when you go with eight legs, your degrees of freedom will be affected seriously. So I will not go with eight lakhs from personal point of view. Okay. I hope I could answer your question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I repeat, there is no hard and fast rule regarding AIC and SIC. But from my experience, I found that SIC, uh, AIC gives a uh, better result in most cases. But, but I personally always check uh, SIC as well as, well as uh, AIC. And I find that more than 80% time they give similar result. If I find that they do not give same result, then I use other parameters, other indicators. Anyway, <clears throat> now I would like to tell something very important in, in, uh, of, of uh, test equation. I find that many research papers, they, what they do, they report um, unit root uh, value, tau value with intercept, then with none, their trend and intercept. I find not many paper. But actually, you don't need to do this in, 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 I mean, in modern times with, with EVU's advanced version. You don't need to be confused that which kind of test equation you should have. What you can do, you can ask the data whether you follow trend, intercept or not. What you do, you first estimate a model with trend and intercept. I, I, I hope you can see, I'm estimating the model with trend and intercept. And estimate the model and see whether your trend is significant or not. Those who have studied econometrics, you, you can easily relate that trend here, this coefficient is 2.89, but the value is insignificant. You see, it is insignificant. So you don't look at the result. You need not look at the result because this result will be biased. Why it is biased? Because you are running a model with which is insignificant in nature. Okay? You report your 
you note down your adjusted r square yeah. what is the adjusted you keep yourself muted please keep yourself muted please keep yourself muted i can't concentrate someone uh dibbojit sir can you hear me sir uh, i have muted the participant okay okay so what i wanted to say <clears throat> here you can see that the trend coefficient is insignificant and the adjusted r square is 0.53 so let me reestimate the model without trend without trend i am doing because trend is insignificant i will not look at the result so you see here again the adjusted r square i mean sorry on the intercept is insignificant 0.18 probability value is 0.18 uh, those who have not studied econometrics or statistics will find it difficult what i am telling but for others i am telling this that here you can see that the consumption expenditure is insignificant and the adjusted r square is 0.55 so what i'll do i will again estimate this model without intercept and trend what so so i can see that though the model does not have any insignificant coefficient the adjusted r square has significantly fallen that means the model with insignificant intercept had more adjusted r square value than this so what i'll do i will go with the model intercept now please don't ask me the question sir why you are keeping uh, intercept even though it is insignificant the answer is i am keeping intercept even though it is insignificant because this model gives me higher adjusted r square so if it gives you higher adjusted r square it indicates that the intercept is insignificant but not redundant so once you have decided this model once you have ensured that you have right you have estimated the right model then you go and see your result your tau value is 2.86 and the probability is 1 which means that the variable has a unit root means what is the meaning the meaning is that the variable is not stationary now the candidate who has raised uh, the question regarding lag selection you see the maximum lag we have offered it to be 4 but the software has selected it 3 so it is automatic i have not uh, selected it 3 it is automatically selected so i hope i could tell you how to estimate the right model for testing unit root now since this uh, variable at level uh, gives you unit root indicating that the variable is not stationary you can go for fast difference and trend and intercept so here you can see trend is significant okay but the constant is insignificant and adjusted r square is 0.22 so let me reestimate the model with intercept i'll i'll see whether adjusted r square increases or decreases if adjusted r square increases then i will remain stick with intercept model you see adjusted r square has decreases so that means i cannot keep this model this model is a poor model i will go back and keep the model with trend and intercept even though intercept is insignificant now once i have ensured that i have estimated the right model i will go and check what my tau value the tau value is minus 3.01 and the probability value is 0.14 which means it is again non stationary which means again it is that is the variable is non stationary even at fast so this is how you check so this is how you check stationary
Now, if if you find that the variables that you are dealing with have stationary uh, are non-stationary at level, okay, are not stationary at level, but stationary at fast difference, then you can go with a testing called co-integration test. Okay, I'm not going because it is uh, advanced time series econometrics. I hope the next uh, presenter will show that. Uh, if you find that your variables are at least co-integrated, but not stationary at level, then you can use OLS. Okay, you can use OLS. Uh, there are a lot many models. Okay, now you also can estimate uh, models with uh, with variables at, which are stationary at different levels. Say, for example, if one variable is stationary at if level and the other variable is stationary at fast difference. Then also we can use models. Uh, in these days, there are models called ARDL, very popular. Okay. So <clears throat> before I end, uh, I would like to tell you uh, some steps that you always should follow when you deal with time series analysis. <clears throat> Thing I have to show uh, the the short of for the year. Now, uh, these are some uh, standard sequence of steps you can say. Sequence of steps that you can follow whenever you come across uh, time series data. What are the steps? It doesn't matter whether, people, whether you are preparing for PhD or you are preparing for any uh, research paper okay the first you should do is specification of the model specify your model it can be univariate model it can be multivariate model okay it it, it may have uh, lag variables it may not have lag variables okay the first thing that you have to do you have to specify your model second thing test all the variables all the variables for stationarity that means you you each and every variable you should check whether or not that's step. step number two If the variables, if the variables do not have unit root, do not have unit root, estimate the equation. in its original units. That means if you find that the variables are stationary at level, then you estimate the model at level. You need not take any fast difference or second difference. If the variables Have unit root, that means station non-stationary. Then check for co-integration. There are so many techniques of co-integration. Okay, you choose as it, as, as it demands. I mean, it depends on your model, data. Uh, I cannot give you a particular name. Then, step number five if the variables have unit root, have unit root, but are not co-integrated unit roots but not co-integrated
then what you should do then change the functional form functional form of the model functional form means you take first difference of the uh, variable if it is uh, not stationary at level then take first difference and check whether it is stationary or not if it is stationary then keep that variable as first difference then you pick second variable second variable is non stationary at level non stationary at first difference but stationary at second difference then keep it as second difference then you pick third variable and uniformly you check okay that means you 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 change the function from the variable in a manner so that all the variables in the changed form become stationary if it is first difference then first difference if it is second difference then second difference but doing that uh, makes things very uh, uncomfortable to interpret i personally don't like that i will i will rather drop some variables and pick some other variables some related variables or even you can go with instrument variable anyway now step 6 if the variables if the variables have unit root and also co integrated that means they are not uh, stationary at level unit root but they are co integrated in that case we can estimate estimate the model in level okay few minutes back i told you that there are some special case when we can uh, estimate model with non stationary variable also okay so this is the this things that means if your variable are having unit root non stationary but if they are co integrated then you can estimate the model at level sir excuse me how to know whether they are co integrated or not how to test yes there are lot many test actually uh uh one simple uh, test is called uh dicke fuller test for co integration let me show you this in eviews okay since you have raised this question very short line for you suppose i have this data consumption uh, expenditure and say for example yd these are the two variables okay so i want to check whether they are co integrated or not you told me to show so i'm showing in eviews you can do it very easily there are at least three technique through which you can do i am showing you the simple possible technique so i'm selecting these two variable okay then you go to co integration test here you can see so this is called johnson system co integration test and then you have single equation co integration test very briefly i am telling you that if your model is one directional model suppose consumption expenditure is my dependent variable and income is my independent variable okay so this is called single directional model then you go with single equation co integration test but if you say that no my uh, modeling is not uh, uh, unidirectional i am going to see uh, uh, bidirectional thing like i want to see how income effect consumption and how consumption effect income that is in one model consumption is my dependent variable and income is my independent variable and in another model income is my dependent variable and consumption is my independent variable so if you have this kind of setting then you don't go with single equation you go with johnson system equation but if you have a single equation modeling that means you have uh, multiple variables but they have only one equation that is is dependent variable or child malnutrition is your dependent variable or gdp growth is your dependent variable then go with single equation okay now <clears throat> just like before you can go with constant you can go with linear trend you can go with quadratic trend depending on the uh, type of your uh, data nature of your data so, i mean you choose uh any one of them depending on the technique i told you just few minutes back 
I am going with constant. Then lack specification, as I told you, I generally prefer AIC. But if you like, you can go with SIC also. But I generally prefer AIC. I'll go with maximum lag equals to four. Okay. Then additional trend, I don't like. I don't need additional trend. Then I click on OK. Okay. So here is the result, as you can see. Okay. You look at this this value, this probability value. This probability value will do it. Consumption expenditure is my dependent variable. Overlook this. If this is not for you, since your consumption expenditure is dependent variable, the probability value is greater than 0.1. It is 0.29. So anything greater than 0.1 means your null hypothesis is not accepted. Uh, accepted. Your null hypothesis is accepted. You see the null, null hypothesis. Null, null hypothesis series are not point indicated. So that means in this case we do not have point indication. If this value probability value would have been less than zero point one, then we could say that my null hypothesis is accepted. Okay. There are two statistics. One is called tau statistics and other is called jet statistics. You can use both. Okay. They generally give similar result. But sometimes they give different result. Okay, tau statistics also you can use, but in this case they give similar result. That means my series are not point indicated. I hope I have answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, so with this I stop here. If you have any queries, you can raise. Thank you for giving me time. Over to Dibujini sir, if you are present. Yes, sir. I could finish in time. I think I could finish in time. Yes, sir. It was wonderful <laughs> discussion, sir. Wonderful. Sir, I have a query. Uh, please. Uh, sir, uh, in uh, sir, you have told that in case of lag distributed model, uh, the lag value suppose we uh, uh, the coefficients of lag value be uh, beta zero, not beta one. Uh, the initial the beta one has more emphasis over the present value of the dependent variable. Am I right? I could not follow. Sir, the uh, co coefficients of the uh, lag values of independent variable in case of the beta, hello, the beta, the beta not has more emphasis over the present value of the dependent variable. If I have three lag, lag values of uh, independent variable, the beta not um, uh, among beta not beta one and beta two, the beta not beta zero has more emphasis over the present value of the dependent variable. Hello. 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 Uh, sorry, it's uh, not there, I guess. There is lost connection. Yes, I also think so. The lost connection. Wait for something. I came back. Came back. <laughs> So, uh, Abhijit sir, can you listen to us? Hello. Yeah, can you listen to us, sir? Uh, sir can, can you, you can you? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Can you yeah. can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear. Yes, Just, uh, you missed the question. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, please, 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 uh, please, please, please raise the question. question. Can you repeat the question? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, if I have, I, I, I have chosen three lag, three lag values, and the, uh, uh, that is, uh, and the coefficient of three lag, that is beta not, beta one and beta two, the beta not has okay. more emphasis, emphasis over the present value of the dependent variable. Okay. So, sir, if my 
uh, among my three lags, the beta naught and the beta or uh, two both are significant, but showing different res uh, different directions of relationships. So suppose one is showing positive relation, beta naught is showing positive rel relationship, and beta uh, two is showing negative relationship, and both are significant. So what? Uh, relationship will I choose? Uh, when, what impact uh, uh, oh, means? Okay, I got it. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You listen. Uh, in in your case, this beta naught and beta one belong to the same variable or not? Same variable, different lag. Sorry, sir. Your uh, sorry. Can you please repeat? You said about beta one, beta naught, and beta one. So beta naught is the coefficient of uh, current period, and beta one is the coefficient of last period. I mean, yes, same yes, variable sir. but with lag. Okay. Yes, sir. So you want to tell me? Yeah, you want to know if these two coefficient gives different uh, direction of relationship? Then what you should do? Yes, sir. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. You see. Yeah, if you if you are you if you are estimating a vector autoregressive model, bar model. Yes, sir. E yes, sir. A R, then you need not worry. In case of bar, this coefficient can be giving different direction of relationship. Are you getting my point? Yes, But sir. If you are a, if you are estimating if you are estimating a distributed lag model, please try to understand the difference between distributed lag model and bar. Okay, in case of bar, you can have different direction of coefficient, but in case of distributed lag model, which is rarely used in real world, okay, you have to have similar sign for coefficient. Okay, sir. So, sir, in case of bar, so what will be my interpretation that independent variable has uh, yeah. positive you, or negative yeah. impact? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. You see, I got your question. Actually, I faced a similar kind of problem during my PhD days. Your problem is that your some coefficients are giving positive sign, some coefficients are giving negative sign. Yes, How and both are significant. Is it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I know, I know. I, I, I come across this uh, problem in my PhD days. You listen very carefully what I'm saying. You, what you do, you take the average value of the coefficient. Suppose your first beta naught is uh, plus one two. Then beta one is minus two three, then beta three is say for example plus two one, and beta four is plus minus point five. Okay, you take an average value. Clear? Sir, yes, sir. Are you sir. getting my point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If the average, yeah. If if the average value is positive, then you say that this variable affects dependent variable positively because in case of bar. What you are doing? You are doing Ganser causality to see the causal effect, na? No? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If one variable is giving coefficient is giving positive sign and the other is giving negative sign, so it becomes very difficult for interpretation. So what you do? You take average value of the coefficient. If the average value of the coefficients are positive, you say that my that variable is affecting my dependent variable positively. That means there is causal co positive correlation. I mean. Uh, and if if the uh, average value is negative, then you said that there is negative uh, what position, positive position, negative position. With that, with that, what you do, what you do, because you see you are saying significant. Significance means individually they are significant. You are con conducting perhaps t test. So what you do, you also conduct f test. You jointly conduct f test for this four or five or three coefficient. That can easily be done in EVUs within two minutes. If you are from uh, Assam University, you can come uh, and I will show you in two minutes. So because your if, T will if, not work in that case. Sir, so, so, um, if test is, uh, um, means uh, can I run wall test uh, to see the uh, joint no, no. impact? Yeah, wall, you see wall, wall test, there are two types of wall test for your model. One, one wall test will be your, the entire model wall test. Yes. Or I choose the individual coefficient value. Hello? Hello?
Hello, is anyone there? Hello. Parents again lost connection. Just wait a minute. Okay. Audible? Audible, sir. Audible. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, yeah. Sir. What I'm trying sir. to say. Mm. Yes, sir. What I'm trying to say, one word test will be there for your entire model. That is that will be automatically there in your reviews result. In addition to that, you have to do another wall test for those coefficients for which you want to see whether they are affecting positively or negatively. That means I told you that you have to take average value for these coefficients. So if there are three coefficients, a separate wall test for those three coefficients only. Yes, sir. And from wall test, uh, will I get the t test uh, t co t test value or or is there any other test? Sorry. Sir, from where will I get the t test? F test. Sorry, sorry, t sorry. Test. F, F F test. F test. Yeah, F test you can do in reviews. If you estimate a bar model, then you. Uh, in views, you can go to views, and in that views, you can you, you will get wall test for that. Okay. Uh, can you can you see my screen now? Can you see my screen? No, sir. Okay. Okay. Wait a second. I'm just showing you. But uh, my 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 screen is disabled. I can't help it. My screen is disabled. I can't help it. So try now, uh, sir. Yeah, you see how, how I'm doing it. Very sure. I mean, okay. This is a group views. Uh, where is bar bar? Yes, Bengal possibility. Okay. So suppose I am estimating a model. Uh, where is bar? Yes, here it is bar. So standard bar, so for example, C O. Then I have. I hope you can see it, Dipshika. Or yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Here you see, I have uh, uh, two variable yd. Uh, this is giving me, okay, let me give more lag. Let me give three lag. Yes. Now you see your case. My first variable is positive, second variable is positive, third variable is negative. So what I will do, I will find average value of these three. So I hope 0.22 plus 0.27 plus minus 0.28 will be positive only. So I will say that YD is positively affecting consumption. Now the test, how you should do the test. Now you have to calculate the coefficient. The coefficient number is, it is one, two, three, four. So Y for YD, the coefficient number is four. It is five, it is six. So what I do, I go to view, then, uh, Uh, what I should do to actually re-estimate this model. Sir, I okay, guess uh, after, after, uh, uh, after conducting OLS. No, no, you see, let me, let me tell you. After, once you estimate this model, you go to representation. Once you go to representation, 
you will get this coefficient. You see this coefficient. Now uh, you can re-estimate the model using ONS because you have this coefficient now. So once you have re-estimate yes, this model, I'm not sure whether this function will give me. Yes, not, uh, yeah. Sir, go to proc. Wait. Because time is up, uh, estimate the bar model, then you go to decision and uh, keep this, uh, copy this equation. Okay. Once you copy this equation, you have to go to Walter and so your screen your is not visible. That is very getting issue actually. So, screen not visible. Sir. Yeah. So, try to say, it will take some time if you, but I think I don't have time. So this is your bar model. If you your bar model, then you go to representation. Once you representation, you will get your estimated model. How they have estimated this model, you can see. So you have to specify this estimation in your normal OLS model. I mean, normal OLS window. Like this model we have estimated for consumption expenditure as your so your screen is not visible. So you estimate this skin is not still visible. Yes, sir. Is there from uh, uh, administrative uh, point of view? I don't know why it is getting disconnected after a bit two minutes. I have more day to show this actually. Uh, can you hear me? We can hear you, sir, but uh, the screen is not yet shared. Maybe some bandwidth issue at your yes, end. Yes, but yes, I, I also think so. So I have to call it a day because without showing the screen, I don't know. I have already shared it. It just actually got hanged in like, uh, yeah, now it came, sir.
Sorry. Yeah, it came, sir. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, what I was saying, you estimate this model in bar. This is the bar model. Okay. Then you have to gently see whether this coefficients 0.22, 0.27, and 0.28 are significant or not. Okay. But unfortunately, in if you scan, these are this cannot be done directly. Okay. This cannot be done directly. Uh, no, this is not done directly. So what you have to do, you have to go to uh, representation and then copy your model. Yes, sir. So I guess there is a problem in your network. Yeah, there is serious problem. I can't help it. You please call it a day. Okay. And if you need, you you arrange one more lecture for me. I okay, will... okay, fine, fine, sir, fine, sir. So I yeah. uh, quickly request uh, Prabhna to do the honor to sir. Yes, please do the honor. Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. Sir, uh, am I audible and visible? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Uh, I'm glad to extend my vote of thanks on behalf of the organizing committee of two weeks FDP. I, Prokhadipta Dash, session coordinator of 14th session of two weeks faculty development program on research methodology and applied econometrics for social sciences conveys my gratitude to Honorable Associate Professor Abhijit Devnath sir for taking time out of his busy schedule to be here with us. It has been a great pleasure to receive the valuable input he has shared with us today regarding time series analysis. I'd also like to express my sincere gratitude to convener Dr. Dibjyoti Chaudhuri sir, joint conveners Dr. Shravanti Maiti ma'am and Dr. Taraknath Sahu sir for the relentless effort they put into ensuring this program a success. I'd also like to extend my special thanks to the other members and advisors of the organizing committee of this program, along with all the exceptional coordinators who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to assist this program. Last but not the least, I would like to thank and appreciate all the participants for patiently and sincerely attending the sessions. With this, I would like to end this session today. Until tomorrow, good night and take care, everyone. Thank you, Prabhna. Thank you. Thank you. I guess Good night, uh, everyone. Sir is again uh, like uh, lost his connection. We call for the so we'll day call and, and uh, tomorrow we'll meet again at four. Again. At four, 4 p.m. Right? Yeah, yeah, 4 p.m. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.